Hello and welcome, this is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're going to use this beautiful set from Pink Fresh Studios. I have the hot foiling plate as well as the stamp, die, and layering stencil set. They all go together and it works really, really well. And I absolutely love how that thought out these sets are. Um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use the hot foiling plate or stamps for this particular technique or these cards. So I just did both. I also couldn't decide on just one or two colors to do the butterflies in. So I'm going to do a rainbow of colors. So I will be foiling six different sheets of these butterflies. I'm going to be stamping and embossing six different ones as well in order to do a whole rainbow of butterflies. I'm only going to show you one of each just because I don't want this video to be weeks long. So I've got my foil here. I'm using silver prism foil. And what I love about the silver prism foil is it Got, has an iridescent rainbowy glow to it, which is going to work beautifully with um, all the different colors that I'm going to be using to stencil my butterflies. I love iridescent shades of anything. It might be because my birthstone is opal, but this is just a beautiful foil. It's got a silver tone to it, but then it shimmers in rainbows. So I've got six here that I've already done. I'm using Hammer Mill cardstock. It is beautiful for foiling. And I'm going to take my solid hot foil plate here, also from Pink Fresh Studio, and I'm going to foil the solid or the waste part of the foil so that I get bonus butterflies. Now, each one of these plates has nine butterflies to it. And because I'm doing the positive and the negative of the foil, I'll end up with 18 there. And then plus the stamped and embossed ones, I'll end up having 27 of each of the colors of butterflies. So I'm going to have way more butterflies here than I need for this particular project, but I'll use them in future projects. I'm using my Misty tool here to stamp and emboss my butterflies. I've got it all set up. The size of these stamps as well as the foiling plates fits perfectly on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch um, piece of cardstock. If by chance you don't want to be working in a size that is that tiny, you could use a larger piece of cardstock, no problem. But I found that it worked perfectly in this size. I stamped my image with Versamark ink, which is a nice sticky ink, and then I put some black embossing powder over top of it. Used my heat tool to melt that embossing powder and then set it aside. And like I said, I did six of each one. So once I had the six done, I am ready to foil. So I've got my piles of each one of these here. I'm going to take one of each, the positive and the negative foiling, as well as one of each of the stamped images. Now, when I was doing the solid foiling, I didn't notice a couple of those um, pieces had shifted when I pulled the plates out of my um, glimmer machine and put it into the Big Shot machine. So if you're worried about that, make sure to tape them in place. If by chance it happens, you can shift it back in place just by moving the plates. But I'm going to be using those particular ones for some of the colors that are not necessarily my favorites. So the very first thing I'm doing on the solid one is I'm taking the lightest shade of my color and I'm just taking that cardstock and making it go with the lightest shade. Now, I didn't want all of my solid ones to be just white butterflies. I wanted them to have some color to them. So it's much easier to do all of this before die cutting them. I'm going to use a blending brush and I'm going to ink that cardstock. And then I'm using a paper towel to remove any of the excess ink. That hot foil is going to resist the ink. So anything that goes on the foil can be wiped right off. I'm using three of each shade of the colors today, but when you go and stencil, there's four layers for the stencil. And what I'm going to do is my darkest shade of the color. On the third stencil, I'm going to use a light hand, and on the fourth stencil, I'm gonna use a heavy hand. So I get kind of two shades of that particular color. Just a way to use those colors and get more results out of the same thing. Some of these colors I would have been able to get a fourth color out of, but um, I'm already using a lot of colors as it is. And I wanted to be able to share with you what to do if you don't happen to have four different colors for each of your layers. Now I've got my paper with the foiled image as well as the stamped and embossed image taped on my surface here. I'm taping each of the layers of stencils in place while I'm stenciling them. That way they're not going to shift on me. And then between colors, I am going to completely clean them off with a baby wipe and a paper towel. You could also use a soft cloth, that'll work. Or you could run them under a tap. I'm just using dye ink so they remove from the stencils really, really easily. You do wanna make sure to clean them off though so that you don't get any contamination of your ink on your paper. 
it's easy to do both the foiling and the stamped image at the same time just because they're using the same colors we might as well do a two for one here so the Pink Fresh Studios layering stencils, they work beautifully with each other. It tells you on the top left corner of each stencil which one it is, stencil one, stencil two, stencil three, etc. So you know exactly which order to go in. They line up perfectly and I found the easiest way to do it was to line up my top left image and the bottom right image and then everything fell into place. I'm trying to make my color a little bit darker towards the center of my butterfly and then a little bit lighter towards the outside. Some butterflies, it didn't really see, you didn't really see a lot of the dark and the lights, but I just didn't want it all to be one solid um, tone of that particular color. If you want it to be one solid color, you just even pressure throughout the whole thing. But what I ended up, ended up doing was starting at the center of the butterfly and then just working my way out. Anytime I'm working with ink blending brushes, I always start with a very light hand. And then as I get used to how much ink is on the brush, you can press a little bit harder. You don't want to be heavy handed at first because you can't remove ink. You can always add more but you can't take any away. So easiest to be light handed and add more if you feel it needs a little bit more ink to it. So now we're working on the third stencil. I've got my darkest color here and like I said before I'm going to use a light hand for the first layer and then I'm going to be very heavy handed for the fourth layer. Once again, starting at the center of the butterfly and working my way out. Now, all of these butterflies I'm doing, I'm doing three tones of the same color for the four different layers. Again, being heavy handed with the fourth layer so that all of my butters, butterflies are not a mix of colors, but you could certainly make them a mix of colors if that is your cup of tea. It's just not what I was going to go for for this particular project, but it's really, really easy to do. And the sample on the back of the package has or shows the image with different colors and it absolutely looks beautiful. I was trying to go for a rainbow here and wanted to be a little bit more in control of the colors. Now doing six of each one, it does take a little while, but it's going to be so easy and convenient once everything is all done, I've got them all die cutted and in a container. I'm gonna have way more than I need because I'm gonna end up with about 150 butterflies here. Um, but it's gonna be more convenient to go and just be able to pick out a butterfly and be able to pick it in the color that I'm wanting for future projects. So this is a great way to batch stock a bunch of embellishments and get a whole bunch ready so that it's nice and quick and convenient to be able to grab a butterfly at any moment. Now, this is the last layer, so I'm being very heavy handed with my dark color here. So you'll see a lot of color is going on the stencil. And this is where it's super important before I move on to my next color to really clean off the excess color on my stencil here. And once again, just a soft cloth, a wet cloth under the tap or a baby wipe. It comes off really, really easy. It's Distress Ink, so it's just a dye-based ink and it cleans off um, the stencil very quick and easy. So here's the very first batch of butterflies done. Now I'm going to stick them to the side and do the other five colors. I absolutely love the reflectiveness of that foil um, with the ink. I think it looks really, really pretty together. And that particular foil is going to look good with any color ink, so none of them are going to clash. I've got them all done here. I did the rest of them off screen. And before I'm ready to die cut, I'm going to take the stamped and embossed ones and I'm going to add a little extra step. So I took my fourth stencil here and I'm taking some glimmer paste which is basically a glitter paste very much like stickles but it's in a pot and you use a palette knife with it. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm putting some in the openings from this particular stencil. Now I'm only making that paste level with the stencil. You don't want to put too thick of a coat on there and then I'm going to set it aside to dry. I'm going to do this with all six of them. Now I don't have to clean my stencil off between each and every one but you do want to keep a an eye on it and make sure that you're not getting the paste uh, seeping out underneath the stencil. I ended up doing three of the backgrounds and then completely cleaning off my stencil and palette knife and then doing the other three. The other risk that you have if you go and try to do all of them is your stencil paste or your glimmer, glimmer paste is going to start drying on your stencil and then it's going to be really really difficult to get off. So you do want to make sure that you clean it off before it has a chance to dry on there. On my foiled images, instead of using the glimmer paste, I chose to use some glossy accents and I'm putting it on the center body of the butterfly and then some of the butterflies have just dots. So I did put the glossy accents on those dots. 
It just gives it a little bit of different texture, a little bit of dimension. And then I set all of those aside to dry. And I ended up letting them dry completely overnight. The glimmer paste takes a lot longer to dry than the glossy accents, but I wanted to make sure that those were totally dry. I did the same thing with my uh, negative image of the foiling. I put some glossy accents on there and let that dry completely as well. I also put a little bit of stickles on there just to give it a bit of a different texture. Now the dies for this particular set are all in one piece. So again, it's easy to line up, tape it into place to make sure that it doesn't shift in the machine and put it through your die cutting machine. I have a big shot here, which is my favorite die cutting machine to use. And off screen, I did all the rest of them. And I've got this beautiful rainbow of butterfly die cuts. I just absolutely love them. They're so pretty. And now I'm ready to make some cards. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm using a beautiful hello script. It's nice and big. So I want to make sure that I have the rainbow from my butterflies in that script. So I'm taking a piece of scrap cardstock here and I'm using my blending brushes and just blending a rainbow on this scrap. Once it is completely done and the ink has dried, I'm going to die cut it as well as a black outline for this. I thought the black outline would be perfect because on the stamped and embossed butterflies, I use some black embossing powder. Now I'm going through and blending my colors and typically when I'm blending ink colors, I will do one of each of the color first and then I will go back and go over each of those colors again. It just kind of reinforces the blending, makes the ink blend a little bit further. Sometimes just that first ink blending, you get a little bit of one color overwhelming another and by going back over it a second time, it just deepens that blend and makes it just a little bit better. So if you have trouble blending or you find that it's not even inconsistent, maybe try go over it a second time. And because you're getting more ink on there, it's going to continue to blend a little bit further and um, the blend is just a little bit better. So I've got my hello die here. I went and put it through the machine off screen. I did my rainbow hello as well as a white one and then two black ones for the shadow. I'm just going to stack them on top of each other and that's just going to give me a little bit of extra dimension on the card. I don't want the only dimension that's on here to be just the butterflies. So I thought if that hello die had a little bit more dimension and stability to it, it would just not get lost on the card basically. So I'm going to glue them together with some Distress Collage Medium. I love using Distress Collage Medium for this because a liquid glue is gonna give you some a little bit of working time. You'll be able to move and shimmy things. The other thing with the Distress Collage Medium is it dries completely clear and it dries matte. So if anything happens to seep out, I'm not gonna see it on my die cuts. Once I've got everything layered exactly how I want, I'm going to put that aside and I'm gonna put an acrylic block on it to hold it in place and free my hands to work with other things in the meantime. I've got my base to my card here. And here's a little trick I like to do if I want to have a mat, but I don't want to add more layers. I take a Copic marker and I use the chisel end of it and I run it down the side of the cardstock. Now, typically I will do this before I don't do or before I do anything else on the card, mainly because if your cardstock is a little bit too thin, sometimes you can slip and start drawing inside your card or that mat and that way it's easy to fix if by chance you don't have anything glued on top of it. If you've already got stuff glued on top of it, there's not an easy way to fix it. So I'm gonna do that same technique with all three of the cards today. And I've got a little splatter stamp here. I wanna add a little bit of color to my background. So I'm taking that splatter stamp and I'm, I'm stamping along the background in my rainbow order, cleaning off the stamp in between with just a piece of paper towel. It doesn't need to be completely pristine clean. I just wanna get some of that excess ink off so that I'm not accidentally contaminating my ink pads. I'm stamping each one twice, trying to stamp it a little bit different each time so that it doesn't look like there's a pattern to it. Once I have that completely done, I'm gonna put that on my card. So the cards that I'm making here are slimline cards. So they are three and a half inches by eight and a half inches finished. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of room to put the butterflies on here. My mat that I have cut for the inside is five and three quarters by three and a quarter. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to do an extra piece with an extra mat. And I just used the Copic marker trick. I'm going to glue my butterflies on. Now I've taken them and I've bent them by the body so that they have a little bit of dimension on them that the wings raise up a little bit. And I'm only putting glue on the center part of the body so that those butterfly wings still stay raised. 
I'm putting them on my card in color order and then I'm going to set that aside to dry completely and go and start my next card. So for my next card I wanted to add a little bit of ink blending if you will on the background. So I'm smushing each one of my ink pads down on my mat on the side of my um, work surface here. Got a little bit too much of the orange so I'm going to tap that pink one down a little bit more put my inks aside and I'm going to mist them with water. Now the paper I'm using is not actually mixed media paper or watercolor paper, so it is gonna react a little bit differently, but I'm gonna just smoosh my paper in there and set it aside to completely dry. Because it's not meant for water, it is going to warp a little bit. In the end, you don't really see it. By the time I'm done, it gets glued down flat to the card base, so it's going to be just fine. I wanted to have a little bit more splots and dimension or splots and speckles to that background. So because it's not mixed media paper, I'm not going to do my regular distress ink background. I'm just taking a speckle stencil and I'm stenciling in those splatters. It's going to give the illusion of kind of a distressed background, but I'm going to have a little bit more control because I am using a stencil and a brush with it, and I'm going to be able to get those splotches exactly where I want them to go. I didn't clean my stencil off each and every single time. I chose different colors that worked together and I weren't going to really contaminate each other too badly and cleaned my stencil off when I needed to. I really love the extra visual texture that these splatters gave that background and I think it really um, really enhances that background and gives it a little bit more interest. I didn't want so much background that it was going to detract from the butterflies but I did want the background to be a little bit more interesting than just a white piece of cardstock. Once I'm completely done I can clean my stencil off and put everything to the side. I'm going to use the same Copic marker trick to create a faux mat around my card. Now I'm using black here. This can be done with any color at all. So you could choose different colors that match the butterflies or whatnot. Or if you're doing a different card, you could choose a different color. It doesn't work any differently with different colors. I'm still going to use the chisel end of the marker and then run it long side along the side of the mat there. I'm gluing this down into place and I put some acrylic blocks and I have a vase with glass beads that I like to put on top for some extra weight if it's needed and let that completely dry. Now before I add my butterflies to it, I have a little sentiment stamp here that I'm going to add to the bottom. I'm just using some black memento, which is just, just a dye ink. You could use any black ink you want. I could even use black distress ink or one of the colors if I wanted to, but I wanted to make sure that that stood off from the background and using black kind of coordinates with the black embossing powder as well as the black Copic faux mat we have around the outside. So I'm going to glue these into place and I'm going to put every second one down just so that I have some even spacing. I also don't want all of my butterflies facing exactly the same way so every second one is going to face to my right and then every the one I fill in the spaces I'm going to have them facing to my left. I'm putting them in the same-ish area as the color that they coordinate with on my background. And I do also have those wings lifted up just like the last card, so I'm only adding glue to the body part of the butterfly. I want to have some dimension with butterflies, and I really like it when those wings pop up a little bit. It's not necessary if you want them to be flat, you absolutely can. I will do flat butterflies on my next card. But for this one, I just thought having the wings pop up a little bit um, just looked really, really nice. Once again, I'm using the Distress Collage Medium here so that if by chance when I put it down, it's not exactly perfect placement, I can move it to where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna set that aside to dry completely and start working on my next card. For that last one, I did a mix and match of some of the foiled, some of the solid foiled, and some of the embossed. This one here, I'm using the same butterflies and they are all the foiled ones. I'm going to put my mat down here and do my Copic Marker Faux mat there. And then I'm going to take this script stamp and I'm just going to stamp it down the back. These are just different ways of getting a little bit of color onto the back of your card uh, and really easy ways to do it. This is just a script stamp that I already had. By doing separate stampings, I don't have to worry about my inks blending and contaminating with each other on the background. If that's something that you're worried about, you can have a little bit more control with it. 
I can also control how much space they are going to take on the card. I can overlap them if I need them to take up a little bit less space, or I can space them out a little bit more if I find that they're not taking up enough. I'm going again in color or in order of the rainbow of butterflies I have to my left hand side here and I'm just filling in that space. Again, I like it when it doesn't have a completely white background. I think it looks a little bit more interesting. Now just that stamped image wasn't enough texture and interest for me. I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to the background that would play off the foiling of the butterflies. So I have some sterling uh, in the foundry wax here and I'm going to mix it with statue foundry wax. I got a little bit of a squirt here but it's going to be just fine. You want to make sure to mix them completely before using them so that it's all mixed and ready to go. I'm adding a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to splatter it on my background. Now I didn't mix my sterling and statue completely because I want to have some flecks that are a little bit more on the gold tone and some that are a little bit more on the silver tone. I just thought it might be a little bit more interesting. And I hadn't done this before and I was kind of curious how it looked and I really like how it looked in the end. I put too much foundry wax on my background here and really I'm just wasting this by wiping it up. If I was working on other things, I would have just taken the moment to use it on something else and not waste it. But just so you know, you only need a little bit of each one. Better to use less and need to squeeze out a little bit more than use too much. Now foundry wax, just splattering it on its own isn't enough. You need to use a heat tool to make that leafing wax go to the surface. So it takes a lot less time than embossing. So it works really, really quickly, but you'll find it goes from a dull matte finish to beautiful glossy foiled flex really, really quickly. And in the end, they look absolutely beautiful and they play off the foiling really, really well as well. So I've glued that mat onto my background, put my acrylic blocks on there to let that dry completely. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I've used a different one than the second card. So they're not exactly the same, but it's from the same tiny text stamp. The next step here is to glue down the butterflies. Now before gluing them down, I'm going to put them on my card and space them out how I want so that I know that I'm going to get proper spacing and don't accidentally glue some of them too close to each other. Now the time it takes to do this gluing, I would probably still have time to move and shimmy things if I needed to, but by putting this on here dry before actually gluing them into place, I'm just ensuring that I've got enough space and I can adjust things as I'm going going to use that same distress collage medium again. It just helps to be able to move and shimmy things when I need it to. For this particular one, I'm just gluing those butterflies on flat. But if you wanted to, you absolutely could um, bend them and give them a little bit of texture and just glue down the body of the butterfly and have the wings pop up a little bit. For this particular card, I didn't think it necessarily needed that extra dimension. I thought it looked pretty flat. I left it as is, but if you wanted to add a little bit of sparkle to it, you could add some stickles to it as well. So here we have our finished three cards. I absolutely love how they turned out and have a ton of butterflies that I can be using and pulling from for future projects. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching the process and I hope you have a wonderful day.